All right, welcome back to The Morning Blend. The ship called the Great Eastern was considered the biggest engineering feat of the 19th century. And it's also the inspiration for this new novel, The Leviathan, the greatest untold story of the Civil War. And we are here with the author, Paul Stack, who was inspired to write this because of a seashell, which is a fascinating story. It's so yeah. wonderful to meet you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for being here. 15 years of research you put into writing this book and, and uncovering this story? That's correct. That's incredible. Yeah, it started in 2001 when uh, I bought the seashell that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And uh, I could get into that in a second. The Leviathan itself is the name. It's a biblical sea monster mm -hmm. that's associated with chaos and evil. That was the name of the ship when it was christened in 1858. Seems like a bad name for a Yeah, it, it, I think there was... <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to take our honeymoon trip on the Leviathan. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, you bet we will. So, so it later was changed to the Great Eastern. Okay. But, but the ship's role really was much closer to, the, to its first namesake, the Leviathan. This was a, this was a killer ship. Mm -hmm. uh, Sting wrote a song about five years ago called The Ballad of the Great Eastern, mm -hmm. which go through all of the things that happened to the ship. During its construction, there was a man and a boy sealed in its double hull. Oh. They, didn't, they didn't find their skeletons till they broke it up. Oh, it on so. its first trial voyage, there was an explosion. A bunch of men in the base in the the hull of the ship, shoveling coal, were scalded to death. Okay. The ship's designer came over to see what was happening. He had a stroke, collapsed two days later. Wow! It drowned its first captain. It was it was widely regarded as basically what what they would call a hoodoo ship. It was basically a. a, a a, a ship that people were afraid of. Mm -hmm. uh, but of all the really ghastly things the ship has done, it was prevented from doing it. Probably the worst thing it could have ever done was to enter a southern port in September of 1861, and that's what the book's about. And why would, why would entering this southern port in 1861 be the deal breaker? What happened was, in the early part of the Civil War, everybody was in the, in the United States was trying to figure out where England stood on this thing. You have to understand, England's strength was in its navy. We had about 40 warships at the beginning of the war. England had close to 1,000. So it would have been no problem for England to have blockaded the United States entirely. And um, the, uh, uh, they found out Seward, who was basically running the entire espionage part of the federal government, found out that the South had secretly entered into a treaty with England and France which said that if the Union blockade of the southern ports was not effective, it would be illegal. And that would give England the right to lift the blockade. Oh. So the best way of proving that the port, that the blockade was not effective was to bring in a, sh a large ship. Okay. And the most effective way of doing it would be to bring in the largest ship in the world. This thing was three times larger than anything that existed at the time. Wow. Just to give you an idea, if you could go back to that picture, of the seashell? No, or, no, no, of the, of the ship. Of the oh. ship. Just, to give, just to give you Wait an idea. Wait till you see the seashell. Yeah, yeah. The anchors on that ship are four stories tall. Oh. This, it had, it was side wheels. So side wheels are six stories tall. It had the largest, per, the largest propeller ever made, 24 feet in diameter. Oh. It is, it it's is a, by today's. It's a ship. No, it was it's a commercial not. ship. Oh. It was built to go all the way from England to Australia and back without refueling. Oh. So it had vast storage. It never went to Australia. That, it never that, went to Australia. No. Talk about the seashell, because that's kind of how okay. you got started with this. It was actually engraved with two pictures, right? right. And some uh, words. That's correct. That's the seashell. I saw that in 2001. I went on the internet looking for things relative to this ship, because I, I was interested in it. Mm -hmm. That seashell came up. At the bottom of it is a picture of the Great Eastern, the mm -hmm. profile, and it says the Great Eastern, 24,000 tons. Okay. Right above it is a picture of a gate in a, in a brick wall with a wind-swept tree. It says, Tomb of A. Lincoln, President of the U.S. Mm. Now, I know Lincoln history pretty well. I'm an Illinois lawyer, and we kind of, you know, Lincoln's like our patron saint. <laughs> I never heard of the Great Eastern. Yeah, is there a connection between there, that ship and... There was no connection. Lincoln? Lincoln never saw the Great Eastern, never wrote about it, uh, and so forth. The ship had nothing to do with Lincoln. It was totally, totally unrelated. The, the Great Eastern was launched in London in 1858. Lincoln was buried in Springfield, Illinois, in April of uh, 1865. And the tomb that's shown on it 
is not the permanent tumor. The permanent tumor is a very large thing. This is mm -hmm. a temporary tumor. It was a receiving tumor, which he was placed shortly after he was shot. So I think that th this shell was created shortly after Lincoln was assassinated. Mm -hmm. And that's what got you hooked onto the ship and, and creating the story and finding out about that, the story exactly about right. the ship. Exactly right. That's exactly right. I'm, I'm an old attorney. I've been around for a long time. Uh -huh. I started out as a federal prosecutor. I like conspiracies. I like understanding what happened. Uh -huh. And that shell to me was somebody leaving a story. Somebody wanted to record something that for some reason during their lifetime they could not talk about. Mm -hmm. I love that you did tell the story and it's inspired by actual events. Some fiction was used to make the story understandable, right. but it's fascinating. If people go to September1861.com, that's the website where they can find out more about this incredible ship and its story. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very for much. For being here, it was a pleasure, pleasure. to meet you. Andrew. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank, thank you so much. much. So nice to meet time. you.